I've been in ministry for 19 years. I love the United Methodist Church. But over the last 19 years, it has changed significantly and is changing. And we have some decisions that we have to make in the future. Some of you may have received a letter if you're members of the church, and I wanted to share this with the leader from the leadership. The leadership council has been discerning the future of the United Methodist Church. In consultation with our district superintendent, Dan Bader, the decision has been made to open discussions on what the changes in the United Methodist Church mean for our church and for each one of us. A letter from District Superintendent Dan Bader and the Leadership Council was sent out to our members on Friday, January 20th. We will begin the process of determining our future beginning Sunday, February 5th, between church services in the Fellowship Hall. Each week we'll share information, we'll allow for questions and open discussion, and take time to pray for our church and for the United Methodist denomination. You will receive more information as we go forward. We recognize that this is a challenging time, but it's also an exciting time as God works through the Holy Spirit to lead us to become all that God wants us to be. So please be engaged. Please ask questions. Please come and see myself or Jeff or leadership council. And please be in prayer for decisions that will be made about our future. Amen. Our scripture that reading this morning is from Psalm 27, verse 1 and 4 through 9. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sac sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Did I get my mic on? Am I on? I saw terror in the eyes of the children this morning. Deb was not sitting there. They didn't see Deb getting out the Tootsie Rolls. And it's like, oh no. But Olivia, Emmer, they all came through, and we have Tootsie Rolls for the kids this morning. Before I begin the message this morning, I wanted to share with you Last week, we prayed for Ken and Diane Cadle and for their son, Steve, who had been taken to the uh, hospital and emergency room in Dallas, Texas. We've sent out um, information and things. Steve passed away last Sunday afternoon. Ken and Diane were in Dallas. They were with his family, and they were with him as they removed life support. Steve was 50 seven years old. He choked on a piece of, of food, and through all of those circumstances and some things, he uh, was not able to, to breathe, and oxygen was short for his brain, and he died. It's hard to imagine. It's hard to understand. And so I want you to pray for Ken and for Diane and for Steve and for his family. 
We sent, sent out the uh, information on Steve's memorial service, which will be held on February 4th in uh, Olathe, Kansas, at Church of the Resurrection. We will reach out to Ken and Diane, and we will touch them in God's way. So I pray that you would, would, uh, would ask God to bring peace, to bring healing into their hearts as well. I was taken by the song of the praise team, The Battle Belongs. How many of you are in a battle? How many of you have tried to lose weight? It's a battle, isn't it? How many of you have tried public speaking? It's a battle, isn't it? The battle belongs to God. So this morning... We're going to look at the psalm, Psalm 27. We're going to look at what it means to seek shelter. Will you pray with me? Lord, we open our hearts as we walk this day with David. As we open our heart to see what it really means to trust you. To seek you. Teach us, O Lord, by your Holy Spirit, may the words be lifted up with honor and with glory to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the question this morning is, what are you afraid of? Call it out. What are you afraid of? Snakes. That is absolute. Other things, what are you afraid of? You all have something, don't you? All right, on the count of three, yell out what you're afraid of. One, two, three. All right. Did you hear that, Lord? We have a lot of work to do, don't we? Well, how many of you are afraid of the dark? I got up in the middle of the night. Deb was not at home. I ran smack dab into the wall. Boom! I thought, well, that's cool. But I'm not really afraid of the dark. How many of you are afraid of small places? Claustrophobia. Oh, man. I get nervous when I get in the car. I can't handle small places. If I was ever taken prisoner, I'm pretty sure I would die before they put me in the jail cell. So I'm going to be good. How many of you are afraid of being alone? Ooh, it's another part of life, isn't it? We all have some type of fear. Whether we want to admit it or not, I have a significant fear of heights. I'm not good at working high in the air. When I was younger... We had a silo on the farm. Do you know what a silo is? And it was 50-some feet tall. And Dad said, climb the silo and affix the spout so the silage can blow into the silo. So I'm 50 feet in the air, and I'm hanging on with both hands, and I couldn't do a thing. Because I wasn't going to let go. And Dad said, Barry, Barry, look up. And so I looked up, and there above me was the spout, and I could see what needed to be done. And I reached out, and I pulled the pin, and I flopped the spout down, and I put the pin back in, and suddenly everything was okay until I looked down. And then I grabbed a hold again. And I said, Dad, I'm not sure I can make it down. Well, he said, I'm not bringing anything to eat up there. Fear. You know, as long as I looked up, saw what I needed to do above me, I could do it. I wasn't afraid. But when I looked down, my hands and my body was paralyzed with fear. Being afraid of heights is not about the fear itself. It's really about our focus. If we have the face to focus 
on the positive, we can remove the fear that often paralyzes our lives. The Chicago Tribune years ago carried an article entitled, The Consequences of Choosing Fear Over Faith. Three men founded the hugely successful Apple Computer Company. Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and who was the third? Ron Wayne. Wayne left the startup firm after only 12 days because he was afraid of losing money in a risky venture. His original 10% stake in the company would be worth more than $22 billion today. He's now 81. He's living off Social Security and a few earnings from stamp and coin sales. See, we all have a choice in life to live in fear or to live in faith. David wrote the 27th Psalm. It's a prayer of praise, asking for God's protection as David went into battle. And it's a prayer for God's continued protection. David faced many situations in his life which he chose faith over fear. You remember David's life? You remember the story of a, a man named Goliath, a Philistine who was devastating the Israelite armies until David stepped forth in faith and slew the giant. We remember that King Saul wanted to put David to death, but David chose faith. And he did not harm Saul. He had a chance to take Saul's life, to end this threat to his own life. But in faith, David was obedient and trusted God. And God blessed him. David wrote, The Lord is my light and my salvation. I will fear no one. The Lord protects me from all danger. I will never be afraid. Now the root meaning of salvation is help. God will help us overcome our fear and manifest our faith. Salvation is about coming to the realization that we all need help. We all need salvation. David knew he needed God's help as he went into battle. He understood it was God who would give the victory. I have shared portions of Psalm 27 at countless bedsides of those who were dying. Who understood that life is a battle. And in the end, God will stand with us as we move from this life to the next. I do not fear because I stand with God who is my salvation. David understood that God would give him the victory. Whether he lived or whether he died, he was in the arms of God. David said, I have asked the Lord for one thing. One thing only do I want. One thing only do I want. To live in the Lord's house all my life. To marvel there at His goodness and to ask for His guidance. Have we asked the Lord for the faith to live without fear, even when we can see an uncertain 
future. The psalmist challenges us to make a choice between faith and fear. Either we make faith our choice, seeing God as our light and as our salvation, or we are filled with fear. And we look to the answers for whom do I fear and why? So what do you fear? Gary and Joan Newland. They sat three pews back, second service, since the very day that I came. COVID hit. Joan had some after effects. We thought it was long-term COVID. She couldn't begin to speak well, her thoughts and reasoning. And, and it went on, and everybody was concerned, and we prayed for her, and she was diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. In the midst of life, her and Gary are facing the battle of death. But I have never, ever seen a person more filled with joy than Joan, even in the midst of ALS. Her body is, is dying. She can't eat. She can't swallow. She can't speak. She's dependent upon others. But she had a joy that comes from her faith in her Lord and in her Savior. The battle belongs to God. And Joan and Gary are waiting for the day when Joan is released into God's arms to be healed, to be restored, to be renewed. What is it that you fear? David prayed for the strength to go into battle and defeat his enemies. But he found that there is time to fight and there is time to take refuge in the Lord. He said, in times of trouble, He, God, will shelter me. He will keep me safe in His temple and make me secure on a high rock. So I will triumph over my enemies around me. It was God who gave David the wisdom to hide, to seek shelter away from Saul. And eventually, David was blessed because he listened and sought shelter. Saul did not kill him. And David did not harm Saul. Do we seek God's wisdom and direction as we battle the enemies of life? Have we learned to seek shelter in the presence of of God. For when we abide in God's shelter, God will protect. God will deliver us. I'm reminded of Mordecai and Esther. When Haman was going to kill all of the Israelite people, but Esther was the queen, and Mordecai said to Esther, you must go on behalf of our people and speak to the king well, Esther could be killed for going to the king. In Mordecai's words to her, you have been put here for a time such as this. Each one of you have been put here for a time such as this. Whatever God calls you to, whatever fear you need to overcome, we need the salvation of God, the help of God, to walk with God each and every day. David made the choice to put his trust in God. If you were given a diagnosis of ALS, what would you do? Would it weaken? Would it crush? Would you run and hide? Or would you turn to God? And say, for the moment I have, give me strength to be a witness of my faith. You know, a diagnosis weakens us. It may discourage us, 
But if we stand in the love of Jesus Christ, it will not defeat us. In Mark 5, 34, Jesus said, Your faith has made you well. Now, it might not be a, a physical healing like we want, but God will heal our heart. God will heal our spirit. And God will take away the fear that may cripple us. It's a matter of choosing faith over fear. Death will threaten us, just as this threatened the daughter of Jairus. In Mark 5, 22 through 23, a leader of the synagogue, whose name was Jairus, came and fell down before him, pleading with him to heal his little daughter. She is about to die, he said in de desperation. Come and place your hands on her, heal her, so she can live. Do you remember the story? Jesus saw and had compassion on Jairus. Jesus went and he healed Jairus' little girl. And he said, do not fear, only believe. Is there a fear that is holding you back from a life filled with joy and peace? What fear is keeping you from a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ? Deb and I stood at the NIC unit at Sanford Hospital and we prayed for the healing of our little grandson Tanner, 11, years, 11 hours old. And God healed Tanner in God's way. Because God picked him up and took him home to heaven. Deb and I have a picture of, of little Tanner on our refrigerator. And every day we are so excited that one day we will hold Tanner in our arms. In the love of Jesus Christ. See, that's the fear that can paralyze us. Or it's the faith that can set us free. Like David, we must focus on the love and shelter of God through Jesus Christ. And the presence of the Holy Spirit must live within us so that we may say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I will fear no one. The Lord protects me from all danger. I will never be afraid. David the psalmist took shelter in the arms of his Lord and Savior. Amen. Will you pray with me? Lord, we pray that fear will never paralyze us. We pray that through fear we will be drawn closer to you. That our hearts will be open to trust you in all things and in all ways. And so this day, Lord, help us to seek shelter through the arms of God. Amen and amen. Would you stand with me for our closing benediction? The praise team said, the battle belongs to God. You know, sometimes I'm in a battle a battle of right, a battle of wrong, a battle of truth, a battle of evil. And I need God to lead me and guide me. We all need God to help us make the wise decisions every day. Seek shelter in the arms of our Lord. Amen.